It is a privilege to introduce to you all the Reverend Sarah Trone Garriott as our guest preacher this morning. For many of you, Sarah needs no introduction. Not only has she been a guest preacher at Plymouth in the past, but she has also joined us recently for a special program on food insecurity in Iowa and Greater Des Moines. Many of you know Sarah from her work in state legislature, as a pastor, and for her public voice in our community. Sarah is specifically here with us this morning on behalf of the Des Moines Area Religious Council, or DMARC for short. Sarah joined DMARC in August of 2017 as the coordinator of interfaith engagement. And in this position, she works with diverse faith communities of the greater Des Moines area to create resources and opportunities. As we continue our Know Your Neighbor series, I'm grateful we're hearing directly from the organizations we're supporting and sustaining in our very own community. Please give a warm Plymouth welcome to the Reverend Sarah Trone Gary. This morning our gospel comes from Mark, the sixth chapter. Please set aside your bulletins and lift up your heads to see and hear the proclamation of the good news of the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place does not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out proclaiming that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. What a great scripture for a visiting preacher to choose. <laughs> In my work for the Des Moines Area Religious Council, I visit religious communities, preaching, teaching, building relationships, so that we can all work together on the big problems facing our communities. Problems like hunger. Every week is different, with different people in different places and different religious communities. I have the opportunity to preach where anyone will have a Lutheran in the pulpit. Methodists, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Disciples of Christ, Mennonite, and today, even the UCC. <laughs> Each time I visit a new community, there is the risk that my words will sound strange, that my behavior will seem strange, that the community's ways will feel strange to me. There is always the risk in going to new places and meeting new people that one will feel strange. So I'm glad to have this opportunity today for us to be a little strange together. I have had a lot of practice at being a stranger. I like to say that I'm a professional stranger. I have lived in many different communities all across this country, nine different states, starting over to build a new life there each and every time. I was a pastor in a country church in rural Virginia. When I looked out the windows of that congregation, I saw sheep in the fields. And I was a minister at a big suburban church in Clive, Iowa. When I looked out the windows, I saw Whole Foods and Best Buy. <laughs> I was a hospital chaplain in Philadelphia and Chicago, each and every day walking into the worst moments of people's lives. And in 2020, I was elected to serve as the Iowa State Senator for Windsor Heights, Clive, Waukee, and parts of West Des Moines. Working in state government at the Iowa Capitol may be the strangest experience of them all. <laughs> and because of that, I have knocked on the doors 
of thousands of strangers just to say hello. And not all of them are happy to see me. Those who have been a stranger know what it is like to be welcomed. And strangers also know what it is like not to be welcomed. This is the most important lesson that Jesus teaches his disciples before they begin their ministry together. He wants them to experience being a stranger. So he sends them out with nothing, no bread, no bag, no money, only one change of clothes, so that they must rely on the hospitality of strangers. They have no choice but to look to others, to look to strangers for food, for shelter, for safety. And because of that, they learn about welcome because they receive it. They know what a stranger needs to feel welcome because they have experienced it. They will have to ask for help, and because of that, they will know how to help others. By being welcomed, they learn best how to welcome. And just after this lesson, as soon as they return, the people are coming. Hungry crowds of thousands, the sick, those in need of healing, the outcasts, they will all be coming. And Jesus needs his disciples to know how to receive them. When Jesus sends the disciples out with nothing to take care of themselves, they will also encounter people and places that do not welcome them. They will experience rejection, and they need to be ready for that too because they will be going out into a world where their message of the kingdom of God will sound very strange when compared to the kingdom of this world. They will be rejected. Their message and the healing they bring, the freedom they offer, will be refused. And they will need to learn how to move on, how to keep going. They need to practice letting go so that they do not become bitter or vengeful. Jesus is sending them to share the good news with the world, and he doesn't want anything to stand in their way or hold them back. As Christians, as disciples, the first and most important lesson that we can learn is how to be a stranger. So how strange is this community? How strange are you, people of Plymouth? What are your own experiences of being welcomed or not being welcomed that can empower this community to care for a world in need? Because people are hurting right now. During the pandemic, our food pantry network went from seeing 19,000 unique individuals every single month down to 10,000. Because during the pandemic, there was so much help available, and it was working. Cash for lower-income families, enhanced unemployment benefits, a monthly child tax credit check, expanded SNAP food assistance benefits free school lunches and breakfast for everyone. Child poverty and child hunger was dramatically reduced. But now, most of those helps are gone. And the hurt is roaring right back. This month, our food pantry network has served 1,000 people each day we've been open. Every day we've been open, we're almost back to assisting 19,000 unique individuals this month. The people are coming. The hungry, the sick, the ones in need of healing, the outcasts. Jesus is sending them to us. He is sending us to them. And the ones who will be ready to go out and meet people where they are are the ones who are okay with things getting a little strange. 
the ones who will be up to the task to welcome in the ones who show up, are those who have been strangers in some way at some point in their lives. So I thank you for welcoming me today and letting us be a little strange together. Because it is a strange thing to offer your entire offering to help those in need. As a Lutheran, I think it's a little strange that you were clapping in church, but we won't talk about that right now. Um, it's good for me, too, to be here. I give thanks for the ways that this community can invite others along in the work that Jesus calls us and sends us out to do. Amen. <laughs>